Hi, everybody. My name is Stephen Rothstein. I'm the Managing Director of the Series Accelerator for Sustainable Capital. I appreciate your being here today. We have an important discussion about the insurance industry. We're going to be talking about a new report, really a user's guide to navigating climate risk, progress and challenges in the U.S. insurance sector. This is what the cover looks like that you've either seen or will be seeing. This is our second annual report. And because it's so much information, literally thousands and thousands of pages of insur hundreds of insurers with looking at their climate risk using TCFD, uh, that we've partnered with Manifest Climate. Uh, and they've done machine learning analysis that's incredibly, incredibly helpful. So with that, let me uh, let me turn it over to my two colleagues, Mead and Gina, for their presentation of this. Mead, over to you. Thank you, Stephen. Hey, everyone. Um, there's really three things I want you to get out of this webinar, and they are understanding the underlying data. So what data did we actually use? What did we gather? What disclosures were actually shared with us? It is really important to understand what has been included and not included um, as part of this analysis. Second thing is a tutorial on actually using the dashboard. Gina's going to walk us through that in a in a much more detailed fashion. Uh, but the dashboard is meant to be interactive. It is a Power BI dashboard. It helps you visualize the data. As Stephen mentioned, there's thousands of data points. And being interactive with that dashboard, learning how to use it, you'll be able to draw your own insights and make your own decisions and look at different trends uh, and patterns. Last thing I want you to be aware of is this is... Uh, everything that we're going to discuss today is going to support the main webinar and the comprehensive report. Um, the, this webinar is mainly focused on how to explore the data, understand how it was collected and how it was analyzed, but not necessarily focused on the analysis. That's what the report and the other webinar is going to do. All right, so let's dive into the specifics of the underlying data. There's a few points here that I want to mention and make sure that everybody is aware of. Uh, number one, the submission process. So all data submissions were made through the California Department of Insurance online portal. The companies were able to choose to either uplo upload their own climate risk disclosure either as a PDF, or if they didn't have one, they can actually directly answer survey questions hosted on that portal. Second of all, it is very important to note that the submission wasn't for everyone. Any insurance company that had a direct written premium exceeding 100 million, um, and they had to be in a participating state, they were required to submit this, their disclosures. The good news is that actually represents over 80% of the insurers. So you can feel very confident that the data analyzed covers actually some significant players in the industry and the majority um, of, of the players in the industry. Another important point to note here is the group versus individual submissions. While each company had to submit its own report, we often saw many groups of companies, typically the ones that are under the same ownership, um, I, uh, submitting identical responses. And, and that's quite normal. This is a very good trend. It just means most people are uh, choosing a centralized approach to managing climate risk. It, but it is very important to note the difference between the group and the company levels because it does have implications on the data when it's viewed in the dashboard. Another nice thing here is the numbers that we've seen year over year. So there is a noticeable increase in submissions. We went from 446 uh, last year to 521 this year. Um, this is obviously a great growth, a great trend to see. It's not just about the quantity, but it really does further enhance the analysis and enriches the insights that we're able to pull. Um, so it's a very nice trend to see. Hope it continues. Um, and last but not least, um, this is super cool. All the data is publicly accessible. Um, so all these reports are accessible through the CDI portal. Um, they basically allow for this transparency. It's not just great for accountability, but for you, the stakeholder, you'd be able to play around with the dashboard, engage and utilize the data along with what you're seeing in the dashboard. So um, that's pretty exciting. Okay, let's talk about what we did with the data. So we've collected all the data thanks to the California Department of Insurance, but then we used Manifest Climate's proprietary AI model to be able to assess these surveys and PDFs to see if they align with the TCFD four pillars and 11 recommendations. So as you can see here, if you're not familiar with TCFD, it's made up of four pillars. There's governance, strategy, risk management, metrics, and targets. The first row is uh, definitions, but really the recommendations are here uh, after the first row. You can see that governance has two different recommendations 
and all the other pillars have three recommendations. For those of you that are not familiar with TCFT, it is the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures. They were established by the Financial Stability Board, and really the whole point of this framework is to allow folks to disclose any climate-related risks um, that can be used by companies, banks, investors, um, and be able to provide information to the stakeholders. Um, it was it was meant so organizations can actually take on these recommendations and actually improve their transparency and accountability um, on climate related risks and opportunities. For those that are in the know, they might already know that TCFD is actually transferring the responsibility over to IFRS, but that actually doesn't change anything. IFRS is assuming the exact same recommendations. There are part of that. So IFRS is the International Financial Reporting Standards. Um, and it was also designed to bring in consistency, transparency, comparability across the different financial statements, across different countries even. So again, the main goals here are, given this framework, how can we enhance transparency, promote accountability, and actually just make it easier to compare apples to apples? So when you're looking at different companies, different sectors, um, are we able to compare them? So that's what we've done here. We've taken all these submissions and we've actually assessed them across the TCFD framework, but we didn't stop there. There is also the manifest climate methodology as well. So we took it a step further and we actually expanded on the 11 recommendations and we are able to assess the companies on more than 40 specific action items. So for example, what you're seeing here are a sample of 13 action items. There's over 40. And what you can see here, for example, instead of the two recommendations like board oversight and management role, you're able to break that down further to talk about the board review cadence or the management reporting cadence or even the responsibility delegation and so much more. Um, so you'll see that a bit uh, uh, later in the dashboard, but this basically gives us way more granularity on what things companies are doing and not doing. And again, it's just building on that transparency and accountability that both TCFD and IFRS are trying to do. Okay, the dashboard. So like I mentioned, Gina is actually going to walk us through the dashboard itself uh, hands on, but I wanted to just give you guys a foundation on what to expect and how to um, align your mind uh, to, to frame it in the right way so you can actually absorb all that data. There is a lot of data, as Stephen mentioned, uh, but hopefully after today's webinar, you're going to feel a little bit better about tackling um, all that data. So number one is it is there, the raw data is is there for you, but it, and if you feel comfortable enough to go in and actually analyze it yourself, you can feel free to do so. But we've also built a dashboard around that data. It's the exact same data, and it's just meant to make it a bit easier for you to just dive in and start looking at the insights and the different trends. Um, what you're going to see here in the, the dashboard is actually seven different pages, like I mentioned, a lot of data, but it's actually split into three different sections. Number one, you've got the year-over-year -year analysis. So this is where we look at the overlapping companies from last year and this year. And we do an analysis on the uh, overall trends that we're seeing. So in terms of pillar and recommendation alignment. And then there's two other sections where we actually dive into this year's uh, submissions and see how they were doing. So the section number two is the overall analysis that looks at overall um, how people are aligning on the different pillars, recommendations, and manifest uh, climate action items. So things like how many companies have hit all four pillars or how many companies have hit over 20 action items. These are the kind of questions you'd be able to answer in those pages. And then the last section allows you to actually specific, specifically choose an individual uh, uh, alignment uh, pillar. For example, you can look at uh, governance specifically, you can look at board cadence specifically, you can look at specific action items and actually work backwards to see how many people align to that. Okay, so to quickly summarize, there's really three big sections. We've taken all the data from CDI, we've assessed them and analyzed them using Manifest Climate's AI model, and then we've displayed all that information into this dashboard, which Gina is going to walk us through in just a moment. Okay, without further ado, I'll pass it to Gina. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Um, so as Ahmed mentioned, I'll be taking us through a technical tutorial of the dashboard that we've created through this section of the webinar. Um, but before I dive into each specific section of our dashboard and all the nitty gritty details, um, I will introduce the main sections first and the functionality of each page, just to showcase how everything is connected um, 
again. So it's important to note, as Ahmed also mentioned, that Power BI dashboards are an interactive tool. So that means that each page that I show you can be manipulated to adjust your results. And that includes the use of filtering and highlighting functions. And as we move through each page, I'll be calling out the ways that those filters can be used. But before we get into those details, a few general functionalities of Power BI dashboards to call out are that we can navigate through the seven pages here at the bottom of the screen, where you can click the arrows to go through each page. But you can also click these numbers in the middle to see the full menu of the pages to navigate directly to the page that you want to look at. Also, you can uh, zoom in and out of your screen using these functionalities on the right-hand side of the bottom of the screen, either by selecting one of these options or using um, the scrolling bar here. So uh, with that being said, I'll introduce the first section of the dashboard, which is our year over year analysis. So this is our second year working with Ceres to produce this analysis with our manifest climate methodology and algorithm. And as Ahmed described, alignment can be characterized at three different levels, the four TCFD pillars, the 11 recommendations, or for that deeper level of analysis using our 41 manifest climate action items. So what this page does right off the bat is provides a comparative breakdown, looking at the alignment results between the 2021 and 2022 reporting years. Um, what we can see is that we have the filtering options at the top of the page. Uh, but if we want to move into the next section of the dashboard, what we'll see is that the next page introduces us to the overall index. So the second section is looking at overall alignment, which starts with this overall index page. This page focuses specifically on alignment in the 2022 reporting year, and that's done by looking at the total number of pillars, recommendations, and action items that groups are aligned with. But this uh, analysis is complemented by the third page, which is our index deep dive page. This is providing a thorough breakdown of the groups that are hitting a particular pillar or recommendation index level. So you can use these filters once again at the top to filter your resulting set. That takes us to the third section of the dashboard, which is looking at individual metrics. So uh, this is first made up of the individual metrics page where overall alignment is split up into each specific section. Um, here we're looking at each uh, composing item within the pillars, within the recommendations, and within the action items. And this page is then complemented by our organizational view page or our organization deep dive, where um, we can look more specifically at the composing groups and companies that are within this data set. Uh, as we mentioned, each page can be filtered to adjust the results. So once again, you see those filters at the top of this page here. Then our last two pages within the dashboard are more informational pages. That starts with our manifest climate methodology, which provides a complete breakdown of how the pillars, recommendations, and action items are all related to each other with descriptions of each action item as well. And our last page is a definition page, which basically describes an overview characterizing the data that you see presented in the dashboard. There's a ton of information here, but I'll specifically call out um, two sections, uh, the line of business description and the direct premium written. So within our analysis, we present different cuts of our data, and two of those are the line of business and direct premium written. Here, you can get a better understanding of how that's characterized within the data set. So you can see the total number of groups and companies that are within each of these categories, seeing that P and C groups uh, mainly are what comprise the majority of our data set. Meanwhile, when you take a look at the direct premium written category, you can see how we've defined what low, medium, and high uh, DWP bins will look like. And you'll also see the count of the groups and the companies within each of those categories. So with all of that being said, um, now that I've introduced every page, we'll return to the beginning of the dashboard uh, to go through our deeper dive. So as I mentioned, this is Manifest Climate's second year conducting our analysis with Ceres using our machine learning technology and our climate methodology. And one highlighted asset of a multi-year analysis is that we can directly compare alignment year over year to understand how groups are changing their reporting strategies to spotlight certain trends. With this, I'll start our walkthrough with our year, year over year page to call out the major trends that we are able to observe. So as I mentioned, this page looks at pillar and recommendation index alignment, comparing the 2021 and 2022 reporting year. 
So as we said, there are four pillars which a group can be aligned with and a total of 11 recommendations that this breaks out into. What this means is that we can see in these graphs on the right-hand side, the total number of groups that are hitting one, two, three, or four out of all four pillars. And the same can apply to the recommendation index graph. However, what we see on the left-hand side is alignment to each individual metric. And those can also be compared. So as Ahmed mentioned, uh, we're leveraging the TCFD framework that pulls the four pillars, which are risk management, strategy, governance, and metrics and targets. Um, meanwhile, we can also see the alignment to each individual recommendation on this bottom graph here as well. So with that introduced, we can take a look at the overall trends that are standing out, starting with the pillar level. So first, overall pillar alignment has improved in general, and we can see this as more groups are aligned to a total of four pillars between 2021 and 2022. And this is reinforced further by taking a look at each individual pillar and seeing that alignment to each one has also improved in general. But what's interesting to call out at the recommendation level is that maybe we're interested in seeing what the biggest changes are that we can observe. So uh, in contrast to the pillar level, we are not seeing improvement in every single category. We're seeing decreases in certain categories. So right off the bat, when we're looking at this recommendation graph, you might notice that they are labeled by acronyms. And so one of the functionalities of Power BI is that we can hover over each data bar and we can see how that recommendation acronym is associated to a recommendation title. So here we'll see that uh, climate risk management processes have, for example, slightly had a decrease between the 2021 and 2022 reporting year. Now, if we wanted to take a look at what the most dramatic changes were, we can immediately see that the uh, recommendation labeled as Strat A has a dramatic increase between the 2021 and 2022 year. This is climate risks and opportunities identified. Meanwhile, the biggest decrease that we're seeing is in Gov B, which represents management's role. So looking at recommendation alignment on the right hand side now for the recommendation indices, uh, we also see overall improvement. So although some columns here on the left hand side have decreased, uh, we're seeing ones on the right which have increased. And this is indicative of an overall positive trend uh, because we're seeing lower levels of alignment becoming uh, less common while higher levels of alignment uh, populating more of the data set, meaning the average trend is for groups to have a higher degree of alignment overall. So now if we take a step back uh, to see how we can use the filters to elevate the quality of our analysis, uh, say, for example, we were particularly interested in seeing the alignment of PNC companies. I can filter for that data set here by looking at our line of business filter and clicking the PNC option. What you'll see is that immediately the entire page is refreshed and it reflects this new subset of data. And the immediate insight that we can grab from this subset is that the same trends overall are being observed. We're seeing more groups aligned to four pillars overall, and we're seeing a general increase towards the right side of this graph as well. So another P, uh, Power BI call out is that with any of the visuals that we're seeing here, um, we can also see these in table view to see the exact numbers from each of these graphs. So say, for example, I was interested in seeing the numbers that comprise this graph right here, this visual. I can right click with my mouse and I can click show as a table and I'll be directed to a blown up view of this visual as well as a table at the bottom that represents um, each of these data points. Going back to the report now, one other general thing that's important to mention is uh, that before extracting insight from any page, it's important to clear the filters that you've applied to that page as that does not happen automatically in Power BI. So next time somebody went to visit this page, the PNC filter would already be applied. Um, so we need to make sure to erase those uh, before moving on to our next analysis, as well as making sure to uh, have everything erased before starting any analysis. So now we can see the general view of this page once again. So, um, what I think is interesting overall about, um, about this page is that we get an overall alignment view between year to year. But this concludes our first major category of information, which was the year over year analytics. And now we can take a look at uh, pivoting to look specifically at the insights that we draw from the 2022 reporting year, which we'll start with looking at the overall index page. So when we take a look at the overall index page, what you'll notice is that this has the same format as the year over year page, but this time we have a deeper dive into the 2022 reporting year with a deeper level of analysis capturing in addition to the pillar index and the recommendation index, we also see the manifest climate 41 action item indices. 
This provides us a more granular level of assessment that we can take a look at for this year's um, reporting groups. At its most basic level, we see similar information here showing the distribution of groups across those alignment levels, as well as call out values to see the total number of groups and companies within this assessment. And once again, we'll talk about the overall trends that are jumping off of the page. So at first look, you'll see that at the pillar level, we have more than 50% of the groups that are aligned to three or more pillars. So three or four represented by these two bars here. But then as we shift over to look at the right hand side at the recommendation indices, we see that with an extra level of granularity, we're actually seeing a rather normal distribution uh, of the data. And then taking that one step further to take a look at the action item level, we're seeing that the graph is much more left skewed, which uh, means that the majority of the groups here are sitting at 15 or less of the 41 action items that they are aligned with. Um, so with that being said, uh, I think that looking at the relationship between these graphs highlights the importance of a holistic analysis, right? So balancing higher level insight with granular details is what gets us the most well-rounded um, results. So in order to better understand data trends, uh, we need to characterize the data set using both approaches. And a key takeaway from this graph is that uh, this highlights the room for growth for organizations to increase their alignment by getting aligned with key action items that could then essentially ultimately trickle up back to their overall um, reporting strategy. So now next, uh, once again, we're gonna practice using some of the filters to drill into some of those same statistics. So for example, if this time I was interested in looking at a subset of the data that was PNC groups that were particularly high um, direct written premiums, I could use these filters once again to click the PNC filter here and click the high category as well here. And we can observe that the whole page has now refreshed again, and we can see that some of the trends are different this time. So in general, this subset is higher performing with a larger percentage of the groups having uh, three or more pillars aligned, a more right-tailed or right-skewed um, alignment for recommendations and action items as well. Um, so now if we take these interactive functionalities of Power BI even one step further, uh, what we can do is take advantage of the highlighting feature. What that means is by highlighting any one column on this page, the rest of the page will also be automatically filtered as well. So if we erase each of the filters that we applied before and go back to the general view of this page, we can go back to that initial observation that uh, the majority of groups are aligned with three or more pillars, and we can uh, extract more insight about what those groups who are aligned with three pillars look like. By clicking this bar right here, I'll see the composition of the groups that are aligned to three pillars are actually aligned with three to eight recommendations and about three to 23 action items. Um, now, with this in mind, this introduces the use case for the next page, the deep dive page that complements the use of our overall index page. So we can jump to that index page now, and we can think about how using that same insight about the three pillars can be used on, on this page now. So um, in general, what this page can be used for is to get more insight about the subset of groups that are sitting at a certain level of alignment. So we can use the pillar index filter once again to filter this subset to the three pillar alignment level. And we see that same bar graph on the right here that we had on the previous page that shows the the um, scatter of the recommendation alignment levels. Say, for example, you were interested in particularly groups who are aligned with three pillars, but who are also aligned with eight recommendations. We can click that filter and this whole table will be immediately refreshed to reflect that subset of data as well. And this serves a great launching pad for any further analysis or research that you may want to do, providing you a targeted approach for that subset of, of information. So, um, this summarizes now the second section of the dashboard, uh, covering the overall alignment approach for this data set. And while these overview pages provided us a general understanding where groups are standing in the data set, we can use the third section of this dashboard now to better understand insight that is related to each individual pillar recommendation and action item. So now what we'll do is take a look at the individual metrics page. And here, each of those pillars, recommendations, and action items are broken down to each of their individual indices. 
So this page is made up of nine graphs and it has a very intentional grid-like structure. As we move down each row, we see that we are going into uh, deeper levels of granularity, where at the top we're seeing pillars, then recommendations, then action items. But the columns also serve a categorization where on the far left side, we see the simple count of these indices. Meanwhile, in the middle, we see um, the composition of these, um, of these counts by line of business. Meanwhile, on the right, we see their composition based on direct written premium categories. So um, now uh, with the direct written premiums in particular, I also want to call out that we have these informational tool tips here in case uh, you, know, you forget the information that was presented in the definitions page, you can easily highlight uh, what those bins are categorized as here as well. So with that information being laid out, we can repeat the same pattern as the previous sections by seeing what um, overall trends are emerging from this page that we can grab. And we can move down looking at each level, starting with the pillar alignment. So starting at the pillar alignment, what we see, once again, the uh, abbreviations for risk management, strategy, governance, and metrics and targets. Uh, what immediately stands out to me is that when it comes to risk management, we have a very high degree of alignment and 472 groups here when we hover over the tooltip lets us know that that's about 95% of the groups in this data set. Meanwhile, when we compare this to metrics and targets, we're seeing that only about 30% or a third uh, of the size of, uh, of count here is what we're seeing for metrics and targets, the number of groups who are aligned with this pillar. But what's interesting to note uh, is that the dynamic functionality of these graphs allows us to get even deeper insight where uh, for the other pillars, there's generally an equally distributed um, range of, of organizations from different direct written premium levels. What we're seeing with metrics and targets is a stronger representation of high uh, categorized groups in this, in this section. Then next thing we can do is move forward to take a look at the analysis we can extract at the recommendation level. So once again, these abbreviations are representative of each of the recommendations. But what's useful is that uh, by looking at the abbreviations, we can see that where uh, risk management is the most aligned pillar, we're also seeing that the recommendations that are associated with that pillar represented by the RM abbreviation are also the most highly aligned recommendations. And hovering over the tooltip lets us know that that is climate risk management processes, as well as climate risk integration. And if we scroll down to the bottom of this graph as well, we see that the same pattern is reflected with metrics and targets, where all of the recommendations associated to metrics and targets are those which have the lowest level of alignment as well. And in particular, that means GHG emissions, metrics in use, and targets in use. But what's interesting to note, just reflecting how this uh, dashboard can be used for deeper levels of insight, is that um, there's also an additional risk management recommendation, which is RMA, and this one is climate risk categorization. And although the other two are among the top ranking recommendations in terms of alignment, this one is sitting at a lower level of alignment, which could um, reflect certain trends that, uh, that some of these organizations uh, reporting strategies may reflect. Next, taking it further to the action item level, um, we can take a look at what trends we're observing here as well. And so across the board, what we're seeing here is if we take a look at the middle graph, uh, P and C groups are representing the largest percentage of, uh, of the composition of alignment to each of these action items. However, it's important to characterize our data um, correctly because this is aligned with the fact that if you recall from the beginning of the walkthrough, about 300 out of the 500 groups in our analysis are from PNC groups, which is aligned with why we see higher representation of these PNC groups within these action items as well. So now that I've introduced and walked through the majority of the dashboard, um, I'd like to walk us through one final use case that is an example that's going to capture a majority of these small details and major pieces of information and the main functionalities and power of the dashboard so that we can see how we can stack all of those um, features to get really rich insight. So say, for example, you are an insurer that is new to climate reporting, or if you are a regulator that's interested in seeing how the industry is doing overall, this use case could be applied to both of those situations. So insurers may want a deep dive while regulators may want a more holistic view. Both of those things could be captured with use cases such as this one.
So if you are an insurer that is new to climate reporting and you don't know where to start, for example, you may be curious to look into the reporting pattern of some of your peers. So that may mean that you are interested in understanding the most versus the least talked about action items within your line of business. So we can start answering some of those questions by once again, filtering to our own line of business. I'll stick with the same example of PNC groups and we'll see once again, the entire page is refreshed. And then we can take a look at the highest and lowest ranked action items within this general account graph. So what we're seeing emerging is that action item 19, which is risk management processes, is the most aligned action item. Meanwhile, if we scroll all the way to the bottom of this visual, we'll see that the least aligned action item is number 40, which is carbon pricing. So interestingly, if we wanted to gain more insight uh, into how these action items relate to the rest of the analysis, just as before, we can highlight this bar to update and refresh the rest of the page. So what we see here is that carbon pricing is actually related to the recommendation scope one, two, three GHG emissions, and it is related to the metrics and targets pillar. And we can also take a look at the right-hand side and we can see the distribution or the composition of uh, the direct, direct written premium levels of the organizations that are aligned with carbon pricing. So now that we've taken a look at that level of information, this is a great opportunity to show how our last and final page, the organizational view page, can complement the analysis that we're doing here right now. So as we mentioned, carbon pricing is the lowest aligned item with about only 1% of groups who are aligned with this action item. Um, and by taking advantage of that last uh, major page, the organization deep dive page, uh, we can filter to carbon pricing to get a better understanding of the profile of the organizations who are aligned with the carbon pricing disclosure requirements. So how we can do that is we can first go to the action item drop down menu and we can type out carbon pricing to filter the subset of the information that we're looking for. And then, as I mentioned before, in our example, we are a PNC uh, insurer, so we're interested to look at that subset of peers particularly. So the first thing that I'll call out is that on this right hand side, we have the geographic breakdown visual. So say for example, we wanna specifically look at our peers that are within our own state. Say we are from New York, we can click this bar once again to filter the resulting subset. So now we can see that out of this uh, data set that we have presented, these are the groups and the companies who are aligned with carbon pricing. And this could serve as a great starting point for further research. But say, however, maybe in a different case scenario, we're, part uh, we're particularly interested in looking at one company. We could filter for that company by using the company filter, which is organized by name, but we could also use the NAIC code. So taking any NAIC code, I'm using one that I have jotted down here. I can filter for that one and I can see the resulting information about that company in particular. So this is another great launching pad for further investigation where I can see the information about that organization. I can see the file that we've got uh, in store for them. And this is a great launching pad for, for example, going into the CDI portal to access these exact documents to help inform your research moving forward. So, uh, with this use case now concluded, uh, we've provided a full overview of the dashboard, walking through those three main sections, which again are year-over-year -year analytics, overall alignment, and individual metric insights. And uh, as I presented through the several examples that we walked through, it should now equip you to hopefully be able to use this dashboard to extract insights of your own as you navigate disclosure requirements and reporting. Um, so with that conclusion, I'll pass it back to Stephen. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. That was very informative from both of you um, and lots of great information. I encourage all of you, whether you are regulators, whether you are insurers, uh, community activists, media, to take a look at this information. It is rich and can tell a lot about these companies. So with that, uh, with deep thanks to Manifest Climate for their great work, I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye now.